when I multiply uh, or when I divide row 3 by minus 52 we have 0 divided by minus 52 is 0 0 divided by minus 52 is 0 minus 52 divided by minus 52 that's a negative into a negative is a positive and 52 divided by 52 gives us 1 and finally we have minus 104 divided by minus 52 is a negative into a negative is a positive 104 divided by minus by 52 gives us gives us a positive 2 okay so we're nearly there I suppose now what we need to do is we have leading ones along the main diagonal and below the main diagonal we have all zeros so we need to proceed to make every number above the main diagonal a zero and what we'll do is we we'll start with this minus five and work and work backwards okay so hopefully what we can see here is that if I add on a multiple five times row three onto row two okay the effect will the zero won't have an effect on this the zero won't have an effect but five times one is five five plus minus five gives me zero that will have an effect of changing that to a zero as we require okay so what we're going to say is that row two is change to row two plus five times row three okay. so the only update operation now is to row two so the matrix is one one two eight zero zero one two okay uh, and to update row two it's the old value in row two plus five times row three so the first entry is zero plus five times zero is zero the next entry is one plus five times zero is one the next entry is minus five plus five times one is minus five plus five gives us a zero uh, the next entry is uh, minus nine minus 9 plus 5 times 2 is minus 9 plus 10 gives us a value of 1 okay so we're nearly there we've just got two more entries in our matrix to turn into zeros okay and hopefully we can see that actually in this case now if we add a multiple of row 3 to row 1 okay actually if we add minus twice row 3 to row 1 that will have an effect of changing the 2 to a 0 so let's do that so we're going to say that row 1 becomes row 1 minus twice row 3 okay so the update operations it's going to be 0 1 0 1 0 0 1 2 we don't change row 2 and row 3 it's row 1 being updated so it's row 1 entries minus twice row 3 entries so it's 1 minus twice 0 is 1 it's 1 minus twice 0 is 1 it's 2 minus twice 1 gives us a 0. It's 8 minus twice 2 gives us a 4. So we're nearly there. The last operation we're going to do is to change the second entry in row 1 into a 0. And you'll probably see that if we add if we add minus or if we add minus 1 times row 2 to row 1 that will have an effect of changing this to a zero it won't affect any one of the entries on that row so what we're going to say is that row one becomes row one minus row two and the effect is a matrix and uh, we have zero one zero one zero zero one two row two and row three haven't changed uh, row one's entries are going to change to be row one entry minus twice row oh sorry it's going to be row one entries minus row two entries so it's row one entries one minus zero gives us a one it's one minus one gives us a zero it's zero minus zero gives us a zero and it's four minus one gives us a three okay so let's just reflect back on this we had a system of linear equations uh, where each entry in the matrix represents the coefficient terms okay of these particular unknowns uh, we we create the augmented matrix where we put the constant terms to the right hand side of this bar through elementary row operations we reduced our matrix okay this matrix through elementary row operations we reduced it down to the identity matrix so if we were to interpret this identity matrix really what we're saying is this is that don't forget this identity matrix is a transformation of this matrix through row operations so actually what this row here tells us is that 1x1 plus 0x2 plus 0x3 is equal to 3 
This tells us that 0x1 plus an x2 plus 0x3 is equal to 1. And this third row tells us that 0x1 plus 0x2 plus 1x3 is equal to 2. So actually what we've done effective what we've effectively done here is we've solved this system of linear equations. So actually the result here, the result okay, is that x1 must be equal to 3. x1 is equal to 3. x2 must be equal to 1. And x3 must be equal to must be equal to 2. Okay. And we can verify this. Okay, you know you can verify it in all cases, but we'll just verify it by making a substitution. So by substitution, okay, by substituting into the first equation. The first equation is x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 must be equal to 8. Okay, so taking the left hand side of this equation, we have x1 which is 3 plus x2 which is 1 plus twice x3 which is twice 2. Uh, well, that gives us 4 plus 4, which gives us 8, which is equal to the right-hand side, as required. Okay. So what we know now is through the process of Gauss-Jordan elimination, where we reduce an augmented matrix uh, down into reduced row echelon form, okay, that's where we have leading ones along the main diagonal, and zeros for every other entry off the main diagonal. Okay. What we know is through this particular process that this process allows us to solve a system of linear equations for the unknowns. Okay guys, uh, this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and I hope this video was helpful. Thank you.